Welcome to my channel in the next Photoshop tutorial and today is something absolutely special because today I'm going to show you my fashion, sort of fashion retouching process from start to finish on this image example. I have to say this is not um, some sort of full comprehensive course. If you're looking for this, I have course like this and the link will be in the description, but right now we'll be focused on this one image and I want to show you how to retouch the outdoor fashion images fast without wasting the time, without doing unnecessary things. And you can see the image uh, that we were starting with. So easy to guess the final outcome. I want to make the rich color, nice contrast and warm skin tones. So I'm just going to close it all. I don't really need that at the moment. I'm not even saving. And I'm going to start from the raw image. I'm going to open this in a camera. So that's how this image looks in the camera when we are going to start. I have to say this image was um, shot by Dominica, my friend photographer. And first step I'm doing with this image, because I already made um, sort of lessons about this, how the raw images in the Adobe products looks washed out. So we, we want to get the rich color straight away, the rich, nice, deep skin color. So I'm actually going to the camera calibration and I'm starting my work from this point, working with three channels with red, green, and blue, setting up the saturation and hue for each of these channels. Our camera profile in um, Adobe products, whether it's Lightroom or Photoshop, will be uh, Adobe Standard. And what I do recommend you to check different uh, standards because even though they are not perfect, you might uh, find the good uh, starting point for your image. My two favorite for the portraits and fashion images is camera standard or um, portrait. So I really like the uh, camera profile, which is camera standard, and it will, this will be my starting point. You can already see how was Adobe standard. Slightly washed out when I choose camera standard. The images, the image is slightly deeper, better contrasts. So I'm going with this one, and after this also I'm going to work with the uh, colors. What I noticed first, the skin tones are a little bit yellowish so I'm going to knock it down by taking down some hue on the reds. Then of course I'm going to add some of the saturation because I want this image to be saturated. Then I'm checking how's the hue about the greens. Also I'm going to add a little bit hue for the greens, a little bit of the saturation. So it's very simple process because many I'm actually adding saturation here. And the last channel is the channel blue and possibly I'm just going to take down a few points and also add a little bit of the saturation. I want to see before, off, after. I want to make sure that also the image is not too saturated in certain points. Um, I think maybe I'm actually going to take down some of the reds uh, and also I'm going to work in hue saturation luminance panel as well to work a little bit more on the orange saturation because I don't want to make the skin oversaturated. For example, we're adding the saturation, but um, I, to my standards, I feel the skin could be a little bit too saturated. Um, also, I think we could add a little bit of the saturation for magenta just to make sure that the trousers are more visible because as I said, this image actually represents the clothes, it's outdoor. So we have to pay attention to the part of the wardrobe like clothes. After this, I'm going to the basic panel and now finally I can sort out uh, some other things. What I want to do, I want to brought up some of the shadows um, because we lost some of the details. I also want to take down the highlight because I feel the image was a little too dark and if I take it down now, it will be much easier for me later um, to work with the shadows and highlights. And that would be pretty much it. Uh, what I could do is take down some of the exposure if I want to make this image a little bit more dramatic, a little bit um, darker. But overall, I think this image is really uh, nicely prepared now to start working Photoshop. 
So the next step is I'm not just hitting open image, but I want to open this as an object. Um, the reason why I want to open this as an object is the fact that in Photoshop CC, if we open images as an object, we can come back to this filter and apply changes anytime we want. That's why it is so important. So I'm pressing shift and then hit open object. The image will be opened in Photoshop right now. Uh, I'm going to rename this layer as an image. And first step we are doing in Photoshop is cleaning up process. So to clean up, we always need to use empty layer. We use an empty layer because we want to work non-destructive on our image. So that's the recommendation. You open new layer. You might rename this as a clean, uh, clean, clean up whatever you like. And this is outdoor image. You don't really have to clean that much here. This is also a fashion image. It doesn't have that many details as portrait or beauty image. So keep it in mind, you don't really want to spend hours on retouching the skin because it's not visible and no one care about this. So let's zoom this in. And you want to also like keep some distance, see, see the right perspective. If you zoom too much, you will not see the right perspective of this. So keep this zoomed out just a little bit. I still can see the details on the first where it needs to be clean. So I'm choosing the first healing brush tool and the, the sample is current and below. I'm not holding all layers, just the current below. So I make sure that the cleaning process will be affecting everything that is on current layer and the layer before, below, of course. And then not being too small, I'm just cleaning up uh, imperfections, some of the small scars that appear over here, maybe something on the neck. Um, this model has really beautiful skin and it's not so much to clean up. Of course, it will, um, be slightly different, it could be slightly different if we will be working um, with model where which um, skin is rather rough. I will I will show you example, some portrait, how to clean it quickly uh, when we have rather rough skin, but um, it doesn't matter because if it's a fashion image, you will never want to overdo the image. So you will do more work. Um, you could use some different methods. Um, but uh, you don't want to really do, for example, in fashion that much of a uh, Dutch and burn process. So I have a few more imperfections. Uh, then I'm switching actually, I can, you can press on keyboard S to choose clone stamp. I'm trying to blend or I feel the colors are not right. I'm choosing clone stamp soft brush, my custom brush, and I'm trying to blend some areas that the tones are not really uh, right. So I'm sort of trying to uneven some tones um, over here, for example, on the forehead, but you have to be really precise and I would recommend you to use tablet for it. Also the neck, uh, what I see on the, on the neck, we have some of the lines, uh, it's kind of shadows and everyone has it, you can easily possibly notice here. So I'm actually trying to remove it. Also, uh, just a little bit, trying to be as natural as possible. Uh, let me zoom out. I want to see the hands, if they are right. I want to see the clothes, if they are right. If the clothes have some uh, imperfections that you not necessarily like, you might actually try to clean this a little. So what to do with the neck, with the lines, what I would do, I would create two curve adjustment layer. One I will call Dutch and I brighten this up a little. Then I copy. This one I'm going to call Burn. But from this one, I'm going to take down the lights. On both of this layer, I'm going to invert the layer mask from white to black to make it invisible. And then I will be painting with the white uh, color brush to bring up the, to brighten up the image or darken. So if I will be painting with the white brush on the brighten layer, I'm brightening areas. So it's so, it's actually that gen burn process. For example, I want to um, 
perfect uh, her neck over here because we have some of these lines that do not really look um, too natural. So we can paint a little bit. Also the bur burn. Uh, if we have the areas that are bright, you can a little perfect these areas as well. Also, I see, for example, on the cheek over here, we have some uh, white area. So I would actually slightly darken this. Uh, feel free to experiment with luminosity blending mode to see if um, the colors are better or not. Usually the luminosity blending mode doesn't rework that great if it's very solid um, corrections, but I think in this case it will look good for dodging. I don't see imperfections, I would will keep it. If it doesn't look right, you can always um, use, uh, for example, hue saturation to adjust the values instead of uh, changing blending mode. So, um, I don't think, as I said, luminosity blending mode is uh, perfect for dodging and burning, um, though uh, in some cases it might do a job and it's uh, it's not an issue. So once it's done, uh, what I would do, one more thing, I would like to brighten up eyes just a little bit. So I'm going to increase the flow and just a little inside the eye to brighten this up. So you can see very small change. If you don't feel confident of doing this on the same layer, feel free to create new adjustment layer, do the same and apply this only to the eyes. And okay, I'm going to put this all into the group, Command or Control G. I'm going to call this uh, Clean Up Process. And then times for contrasts. So for contrasts, I'm using curve adjustment layers once again, and I'm going to call this highlights. I'm not really sure if I will need shadows at this point, so I'm just going to go with highlights at first. And I'm going to image, apply image, and I'm just going to apply uh, the RGB mask as it is, the luminosity mask. So you just need to hit OK, but make sure the blending mode in apply image is normal or multiply. And um, then I believe that will be blending multiply, yes, layer, of course, as a merge once. And you can also uh, you do different way. Let's see. You can also take the selection from RGB, for example, and invert this on this layer, and it will be exactly the same. I'm gonna invert this and it's exactly the same uh, mask as we achieved. I believe going through image and apply image is a method uh, which is a little faster because you don't have to do any selection. I'm just going to increase some highlights here. And I was right, this image is, I believe, good enough and bright enough so we don't, and has shadows quite strong, I don't, don't feel we really need to um, increase the shadows. If I would do it, I would do it very similar way, but instead of um, having mask for the highlights, I would invert this into the shadows and decrease some of the curves. Blending mode is normal, but it increased the saturation, so I'm going to check with luminosity blending mode, and it looks much better at the moment. Uh, the next step is uh, toning the image. Um, many of you already know my favorite tool for toning the image is uh, color balance. It doesn't really matter um, which um, color grading technique you use. You might use curves, you might use um, um, color balance, you might use uh, photo filter, you might use gradient. It really, it's really up to you. What's really important is to understand colors and how to work with them. So I'm just going to my favorite color balance and for shadows, I'm just going to in add some of the uh, reds. And I'm doing this because I do strongly believe that this image looks really great as a warm image. For highlights, we need to do something opposite. So I'm going to add some cyan for the highlights and maybe just a touch of blue. 
It's even too much blue, I believe. Maybe just one point. The cyan seems to do a good job. And I'm going to name this tones. And switch blending mode from normal to color. And this is our um, basic uh, steps, which are pretty much done. What I would do here, I'm going to... Um, you can put this all to the group, or actually you don't have to. We are going to create a stamp at the very end, so I'm going to press Command or Control, Alt or Option, Shift and E to create a stamp. And I'm going to name this stamp and it will be as the final effect uh, for this image. I'm going to convert this to smart object, as I was telling to you before, that we convert it into smart object because then when we go to work with filters, we can go back anytime and correct this. That's why it's very important to work with the smart object. I'm going to filter, camera or filter, and now also I'm going to increase some of the contrasts. I might add some of the clarity. I'm not such a huge fan of clarity, but you must admit that the clarity on this image, even adding a lot, adds some this really amazing depth. And I don't really do this for studio images, but if we work with the outer image and uh, the clarity give this amazing depth and many people is looking for. So then be careful maybe with contrast uh, because clarity also increase the contrast as well. Uh, we might add some of the highlights if you need more. Uh, shadows, which we were not working before, but I think the shadows are pretty dark over here. Um, so there is no need for more work. What I would do more is about a hue saturation luminance. I would maybe add a little bit more of the color for the trousers, a little bit more of the luminance to increase the highlights on the trousers. And that would be uh, my final result. Uh, one more thing I could do, maybe the shadows on the background over here are not so dark. I have a really good idea how to do it. So I would use the curves for it and I'm gonna name this as a shadow, background shadow. I'm gonna switch blending mode to luminosity. Let me darken this a little, just this way. Invert the layer mask. And let's try to paint with the white color over here uh, to add nice shadow in this area. Uh, I think I would try with gradient map in this case. I will see if that's actually uh, possible to do. So I need to use the white gradient on this side. Okay. And let's see. I feel it's going um, sort of direction which gets a little up here. So I'm doing this just a little way up, maybe even more. Let me try to make it longer. And I think it does do the job. So if it's too strong, you can actually in decrease the opacity. But as you can see, it gives some nice depth, um, some extra shadow. So this is my technique how to retouch images, uh, outdoor fashion images quickly uh, without using any complicated techniques, doing everything step by step manually, solid work. We pay attention to details and it doesn't really last long. Uh, even me talking, it didn't took too long. This is the image uh, after raw conversion. Uh, this is uh, the image after whole process. We can also have a look. Um, when we reset all of the settings in camera raw, open image and the difference, um, especially the result, the difference is huge, but uh, the result will be absolutely amazing for the image. Um, what I need to say at the very end, it wasn't straight probably, what I need to say, thank you for watching. I hope, I strongly believe you like this chorus, I um, think it's a little longer than what I used to do. And of course, there will be much more tips coming for you just to make sure you will be absolutely amazing in Photoshop and your images will be impressive and absolutely outstanding for everyone. Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next Photoshop tutorial.